thanks for having me. Um, who likes pump? Do you like pumpkins? I really like pumpkins. Um, I love them on their own. I find in big groups they're actually very terrifying. Um, so who's this? Uh, does anyone know who this is? It's Dan Fisher. He's meant to be me now. This is meant to be Dan Fisher. Um, I'm sorry Dan Fisher's not here. So they called me a few days ago and said, look, we, bingo, would you do this? And I was like, yeah, okay. So I'm replacing Dan Fisher. Um, if he was here, he probably would have talked about his work, this kind of stuff and his ad campaigns. He's very good, all this sort of stuff. It's brilliant. Look at that. He did that. Classic Dan Fisher. The penguin. He did the penguin. We all love the penguin. Um, I, I apologized on Twitter about this a few days ago. I was like, I'm sorry, Dan Fish is not going to be there. I'm replacing someone. And someone said this. So if you want to use the hashtag slightly shitter Tuesdays, please do that. Um, also, if anyone's just completely disappointed that I'm not Dan Fisher, um, just see anyone from the It's Nice That team for a full refund at the end of the night. Um, so I'm an illustrator. And um, you know, sometimes when you're at parties and stuff and people ask what you do, and they're like, what do you do? Um, oh, I'm an illustrator. Uh, cool. What sort of stuff do you do? Um, what does it look like? Uh, funny. Humor. Um, it's really difficult to describe funny art. You know, it's just like it doesn't really look like anything. It's just funny. You're just trying to make funny work. You know, you're trying to do things like this. Um, so some of the work I do isn't funny, which I don't always show people like this. This is like a, a big ad campaign for Nescafe where I, where they, they got me to draw these kind of uh, lovely renderings of, of things for Nescafe. And I don't really like doing things like this. I do it because they pay me loads of money, but I didn't enjoy it. What I wanted to be doing was stuff like this, which is what I enjoy drawing, um, which is like funny pictures. Um, so I've always enjoyed drawing funny stuff. It's just something that's inbuilt in me. It's kind of like the only thing I'm good at, I suppose. So this is some drawings I did when I was about um, eight or nine, I think. Um, and I was basically just looking at, um, I was into football, and I was just looking at, uh, you know, the funny words and phrases that are used in football and kind of making little comics and, and, um, and illustrations about them. Um, and I kind of enjoyed the reaction I got from people that, that looked at these and laughed, and I sort of, I, I felt like I wanted to do more of this. Um, I was always into kind of attention-seeking stuff. So this is me on the, on the right, dressed as a girl, um, <laughs> when I went to school when I was 10 years old. Um, there was no reason for this. It was just, I just thought it was funny. Um, a year later, I was drawing things like this. This is, um, I don't know, is that funny? Maybe that's not funny. But this was for an all-boys school, and this is for 11-year-olds. And 11-year-old boys do think this is funny, I think. They did at the time. A couple of years later, I was drawing things like this at school. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I did this, but I just decided to depict myself as a Chippendales cock and balls. And I put this poster up all around the school. Um, so then I did some other stuff. I went to university. Um, and while I was there, I did a lot of personal work just for fun, just to amuse myself. Like these, uh, I used to do these kind of fictitious events um, and do these A4 posters for them, laminate them, and then put them around the town. Just, just for fun, really. Um, and I was kind of making work like this. This is the first sort of illustration work that I tried to do. Uh, aesthetically, I'm not sure about this now, but I, I still find it quite funny. You know, it's just, it's just silly. Um, and stuff like this as well. I think this is about daytime TV. Um, but yeah, so th this was a magazine I was in in 2002. And I'm always just trying to be a bit silly. I, I, I never take myself seriously. I, I'm not into... I don't mind artists that take themselves seriously, but I'm definitely not an artist who takes himself seriously. I kind of think everything's a bit of a joke. And, and so this is me in a magazine, and you know, I decided to dress in pajamas and walk through an airport carrying a vintage pornographic magazine. So that's how I wanted to depict myself. Um, and it was really nice to look at this. I hadn't looked at this article for years, and I read the little thing I said, which was, it, so this is me just out of university, and I'm kind of talking about what I want to be. And um, I found this really nice little quote from it where I said this. My existence is simple. I serve to entertain and amuse. And um, I'm glad I said that, because that's kind of still what I feel like. You know, That's, that's all I want to do. I just want to make people laugh. Um, this is my MySpace profile from 2004 or something. And um, you can see, again, I'm not taking myself seriously. I'm, I'm depicting myself uh, in my profile picture as a, um, a tattoo on a fat lady's back. Um, this is some of my early work. Um, 
Apologies for the, the bad quality. It's hard to find stuff that's done so many years ago. So this is, I don't know, 12 years old or something. And I was just doing uh, flyers for uh, nightclubs in London and just doing kind of funny stuff, really. Um, this is one of the first bits of work I did that actually gained a bit of recognition and, and you know, people noticed it, which was nice. And it, what I had to do was, um, I was commissioned to do a double page, two double page spreads in a magazine and draw the entire contents of a British Asian news agent. So it was really fun, kind of like this big marathon project. And what was really nice about it was that I got to put a lot of my own kind of personality into it and jokes that I thought were funny. So a few sort of jokes were kind of satirical stuff and taking the piss out of, um, you know, newspapers and uh, culture and, you know, media and stuff like that. And it was really nice to be able to put these kind of jokes in a bit of work and for a magazine to print it and someone to pay me. And I thought, this is great, you know. So from this point onwards, this was a real turning point. And I thought, if I can get away with doing this, I'm just going to be really honest from now on and do, do what I want. And hopefully people will pay me to do it. And so here's a few, uh, again, a sort of earlier kind of editorial pieces. Um, just stuff that was in magazines. Um, there was an art director called Andrew Diprose um, from uh, GQ magazine who was very early on kind of noticed me and gave me some work. So that was really nice. And so a lot of this stuff's for GQ magazine. Um, so that's obviously about schizophrenia. Um, they kind of speak for themselves. Um, well, one of the things I really like doing when I make work, my, my main kind of... Um, thing that I try and do is, I, you know, I want to please the client and I want it to support the article that it's about and I want them to be happy, but at the same time, I want every bit of work I do to kind of work as a standalone piece on its own. So you take the article away or the advert or whatever it's for and you can just show this picture to people and it's funny. So that's my kind of objective with every, every job. Um, and it's great to do things like this. You know, this is the Washington Post. You know, it's a very sort of prestigious newspaper and um, there's two rats fucking in the middle of it. It's fantastic. Um, and it even goes into advertising as well. Um, so, you know, ab funny stuff sells and people, big companies love funny stuff because when people think things are funny, they have a nice kind of emotional response and then they want to buy things. So it's, it's great for advertising and I do get some work doing that as well. Um, so this is for a vodka uh, and it was a campaign about being manly. Um, this is something I did for Perrier. And so what, what's nice about doing funny work is you sometimes end up at some point working for funny people. It kind of lends itself to that. So, um, you know, I did some work for QI, um, the TV program. Very funny, kind of intelligent people, really kind of nice to work with. Um, these are some illustrations I did for the um, inside of the QI book. Um, just illustrating lots of little, little moments. Um, did this for the Mighty Boosh TV program. Uh, did some stuff for Jimmy Carr. That was actually my own little joke that I put in there, which I thought was quite funny. <laughs> Fuck the system. <laughs> he probably took the credit for that. Um, it's another thing for Jimmy Carr. The nice thing about working for funny people. Actually, I don't think most of Jimmy Carr's stuff's that funny, but some of his stuff is. And um, so, you know, like drying your balls with a hairdryer. You get to draw this stuff, which is great. And even when I do work that isn't about stuff that's meant to be funny, like this book cover, I just have to sneak little funny things in there. Um, I think it's like, like what Wilfred was saying earlier, you just can't help yourself. You've just got to make clever jokes all the time. So, you know, dwarf's chin for rent um, on the front of a book. And um, hiding things in ad campaigns. That's why I hid this in a magazine for, um, I hid the word twat on a book uh, in, a, in an ad campaign in The Guardian, which was fun. Um, Everyone here uses phones, right? We all look at our phones a lot. Um, who uses Instagram? Everyone. Yeah, everyone uses Instagram. I worry about Instagram. I love Instagram, and I use it a lot. And I look at a lot of my friends' pictures. I just sort of follow mainly people I know and some kind of creative people and stuff. And so many people post pictures of food. Have you noticed that? There's a lot of food pictures. 
And I spend my life looking through these pictures of food, and I sort of worry a little bit that if I get hit by a bus, um, you know when people say, if you get hit by a bus, that like you're just about to die, your last thoughts go through your mind, I kind of worry that it's going to look through this. <clears throat> I just like funny things in life as well, you know, things that you see when you're walking around. So I was just walking to work and I saw this fat dog watching two fat people exercising in the park. And I thought it was weird. Um, I've never seen those three birds in the background, actually. That's quite nice as well. So I got to work, and instead of doing what I was meant to be doing, I just had to draw them and, um, and then put this on Twitter and, and uh, you know, tell people about it. And, you know, I often get, like, briefs in uh, for things that seem a bit boring, and, you know, they're sort of like, have you, have you read the brief? And it's like, no, I'm busy drawing some beef curtains, <laughs> just doing stuff I want to do. Um, this is not my work. This is Steve Bell, who's a um, you know, sort of political cartoonist. And this is what I think a lot of people think funny illustration looks like when you tell them you're an illustrator and you do humorous stuff. I don't really do stuff like this because I can't, because I don't know enough about news and politics. I'm just not aware enough about this stuff. So what I like drawing is pictures that are just funny for the sake of funny. Um, they're not saying anything. They're not trying to, there's no message or they're not trying to prove a point. They're just, it's just like a silly combination of things, you know? This is, this is the kind of stuff I like doing. Um, here's a little tip, actually. If anyone ever wants to make funny work, it's actually quite easy. What you mainly do is you just put two things together that don't normally go together. And some of the stuff I do, I turn into prints that you can buy. And so um, I like to advertise this, and I like to get people interested in buying them. So I make these little adverts, which I put online, to, um, <laughs> just to give you an idea of what it might be like in your home. You know, it's, it's nice to do that, you know. <laughs> just to give you an impression. It really helps with the sales, I find. <laughs> One of the nicest things is when, um, <laughs> instead of working for clients, you just work for people, um, just normal people. And the best thing about personal commissions is that um, there's no bollocks or bullshit about, you know, it has to, it has to um, be a certain language that pleases the client or the audience or the readership or anyone. So you can just do anything you like. So occasionally these lovely, perfect little jobs come in, like this one, where someone just emailed me and said, can you draw a horse wearing hooker boots for my website? And I was like, yes, I've been waiting 15 years for someone to say that. Um, and great stuff like this. So this guy emailed me and said, um, I actually love the bit where he said, um, I'm a friend of Mark Hopkinson's. We met briefly at your Camden Town book signing. Just, uh, you'd just signed somebody's penis. <laughs> Lovely detail. That did happen. Um, and so what he wanted me to do was basically a wedding cake topper, which is like a thing that you print and you put on top of the wedding cake. Um, so it turned out I had 150 quid. 150 quid isn't that much money. And I said, okay, I'll do it. But if it's going to be so cheap, the rules are that I do whatever I want. Uh, you get no client amends. It's just whatever I want to do. And you put it on the cake and you pay me. And we agreed on that, which was great. <laughs> so... Um, that's, I don't know this guy, but this is a photo from the wedding, so it did happen. Um, apparently, was, yeah, they were all very happy. And someone asked me to do a pet portrait. Uh, this was for someone in America, and I said, I don't really do pet portraits. It's not really what, you know, pet portraits are generally done by kind of weird, you know, old ladies in Southern America, and they do these little sketches and stuff. And um, I said, well, I can do it. I can do a pet portrait, but it needs to be in my style and my tone of voice. And it, again, it has to be my rules. And they said, okay, and so I did a, a tattoo of the, of the cat and, on, a, on a big lady. But pet portraits are weird, aren't they? You can, you can buy these a lot on the internet. Um, like you can go on eBay and just type in pet portrait, and there's loads and loads of artists out there that will do this for like 20 quid, 50 quid. And I really want to kind of play around with this thing sometimes. And I've, I've made this sort of slightly interesting photo of a cat, which I'd like to um, send to them and just say, can you draw my cat? And see if they say anything or... You know, if they try and, you know. There's weird photos of cats on the internet. There's a lot of photos of cats on the internet. I mean, we all know this, but, like, um, I look at quite a lot of stock photography, and um, there's so many photos on the internet of children holding cats, and I don't know why this happens, because the cats are never happy. They're never happy. They're always sad. The child is always happy, and the cat is always sad. I just don't understand why they do this. They keep doing it. 
It's just more and more photos, and it just doesn't stop. And people need to stop doing this, because the cats don't enjoy it. He doesn't love her. Um, so this is the thing that I like doing the most, which is called hate mail, which I'm not going to talk about too much, because I think I've talked about it too much but, um, in the past. But basically, um, strangers pay me to send them offensive postcards. Um, and they look like this. And this is, this is me doing pure work. This is like my most pure kind of um, me, you know? This is what I want to do. This is what excites me and I love doing. Um, so I just get their name and address and I just send them uh, a postcard. And some of them are quite harsh and they have quite kind of nice little <laughs> comments about modern life. And it's nice to kind of get these jokes in there. And people really love this. They really enjoy it. And um, there's like a huge waiting list for these. And, and um, the, the people that get it like to interact with it. And they, they sometimes take photos posing with them. Um, and it turned into a book, which was brilliant. So um, it's just so funny that such a silly idea ended up being a book. Um, and I offer signed books. And um, when people buy a signed book, they're allowed to ask for a little request. And so I get a lot of requests from people, um, you know, with, with various things they want me to insult them about, or their friend, or their loved one, or whatever it is. And so I get all these weird facts sent to me in these orders. And th these are two kind of, they make a bit more sense. But then some of them get really strange. And I don't ask the people. I just do what I'm told. I just do what they're asking for. Um, there's been a few personal commissions with hate mail as well. So these two guys were getting married. And... Um, <laughs> Both of them big fans of the work, and um, someone said, can you do a hate mail to the, to the married couple? And I was like, yeah, sure. And uh, we did that. It's about tying the knot in case. Um, and a birthday card as well. This was for um, Nicole Appleton from All Saints. Who remembers All Saints? Yeah. Um, so apparently, yeah, she's got sausage dogs, and, and I was commissioned to uh, send her a birthday card. So this is what I did. Um, so just going back to stock photography, um, who, who uses stock photography here in their line of work? Mm? And do you ever come across kind of weird images when you're looking for something else? It's a very strange thing. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to do a little rap about that. We came here to <laughs> Give me some fruit and a bowl of shoes And we can go start some wars in my birthday suit I'm not a man with a tampon ready for action And I'm so fucking happy with my latest transaction I got a miniature bathtub to keep myself clean And I hope I don't get seen in the washing machine I keep my head on the stake so I have a sweet dream And I've always got my brother when I want a double team uh. I'm so sick of this cat food I might even eat my motherfucking cat, dude 